This is the Sennheiser Flex 5000. Essentially, this is a little doohickey that you set in front of your television and plug audio cables from your television directly into this and then this little area here relays a signal out to a pair of actual headphones so you can sit and watch loud movies at night without waking up the whole household. Sounds great. Optimized crystal clear sound combined with the highest comfort turn your wired headphones into wireless TV listening system. A uh, wireless TV listening system. And again in various different languages. It's a little different from Sennheiser. Um, I know a number of manufacturers have tried to do this sort of thing before. Uh, the likes of Roku have it built into their top end models. But uh, I, I wouldn't exactly say it's worth using unless you really really have to this hopefully will be crystal clear and with no latency or sync issues whatsoever very excited about trying it so on the side here it says uh, quick and easy setup configuring with all tvs with digital or analog audio output okay so we've got the uh, there's a clip-on receiver with built-in lithium polymer battery the TR5000 docking station. Oh, there's a pair of headphones in here as well. Nice. Uh, power supply unit. Uh, TV connection cable. 3.5mm headphone audio out or optical cable. Excellent. And an instruction manual. And there's more stuff on the back. But we're going to get in and have a look. Stop examining the packaging. There it is. Oh, it's an awful lot bigger than I anticipated. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this is it. We'll set it off to the side here. There's a the little other bit that goes in it and see what else is inside the box. Oops. So down this end, this looks like plugs and stuff. Here we have a plug which obviously takes various different bits. We won't go through all of these, but there's four in there. Europe, America, Australia and Britain. They click onto this and there's a release button there which is always useful. That is a Fihong 124 300 milliamp hour. 5 to 1. Okay, it's got a little yellow connector at the end. And that looks to be a decent length. And that as well. Okay, uh, we have an optical cable here with nice purple ends. There is the headphones that they provide so you can start. Although Sennheiser very kindly sent me something else to test with these just to get the most out of it. And then the 3.5mm headphone or uh, extension cable essentially for plugging into the, your television or whatever you happen to have under your television sound wise to relay it out to the main unit and then whenever I dropped the book on the box on the floor there I heard a very solid sound coming out of it so there's a pretty healthy manual here instruction manual that's that thick that's like uh, half over half a centimeter and then there's another booklet at the back which probably probably your warranty information And it is your warranty information, safety guide, and compliance information. So, here we have the receiver and the main piece. Now, thankfully, the way this works, you don't have to carry this with you. You just plug this in and leave it at the side of your te uh, television. This is the bit you take with you, very handily. This plugs into this and charges. So we'll have a quick look at this first and see what this is and does. We have a, a plus and a minus there. Oh, we got a little green light, so there's charge in it already. And that's for upping and downing the volume. 
with a very stylish Sennheiser logo there. I, I do like that actually, that really does stand out. People might not notice it, but uh, it's there. There's a button here, maybe that's an on off button. Or a mute button or something so that you can go straight to silent if someone comes in and shouts at you for not hearing them from the other side of the house. There's a clip that clips onto you. And then a little compartment under there that must be uh, for prizing open, which must contain the battery. So then you have some uh, plugs here that match up with plugs there. And it just fits in. There's a groove there for the, the clip. Like that. And it's not. Well, I suppose it is actually. Yeah, the, these bits here are almost magnetised, so they attract each other to pull one into the other. And I can feel there's a little bit of magnetic pull as I try to yank that out. Very nice. Now, up here we have one, two, and three. I'm not entirely sure what that is about. L, R, uh, are these buttons? Yes, we have uh, L, uh, an ear with a plus, and an R. We might have to consult the manual to see what those actually do. And that's all we have control-wise on the front. On the side, there is nothing. On the bottom, there is virtually nothing, aside from CE information and a RMA scan code. And some rubber feet to keep it in check so it doesn't move too far. This side also has nothing, but at the back end there is something. We have the optical in, the power connector, and the analog 3.5mm headphone jack. So I guess what we'll have to do is we'll have to test it. But first I'm going to consult the manual to see what these buttons do so I can explain to you. Having pulled the manual out, I discovered there was also a quick start guide so it's not quite as daunting. And we'll have a look at that instead because it seems a lot more picture oriented as opposed to all that text. Okay, so there is a screen here that actually displays battery information. And we got three R's. So you might not be able to watch the entire documentary on O.J. Simpson. <laughs> Click. So we show here how we put the headphones into the bottom here. I didn't point that out earlier. There's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there. Aha, here we go. So adjust the balance. So that's what these are for. L and R for adjusting balance. Resetting the balance, hold them both in, and then select audio profile enhancement. So we hit that and it changes it. Okay, so there must be a bunch of different things installed. So I guess the only thing we can do is go and have a go with it. And we can do that here because we can hook it up to a phone. Okay, we have power right off the bat. See, it's charging. It's got one and two on there. Right, it seems a bit... Uh, Bit odd. This is a standard image. It doesn't change. That just means it's charging. One, two, and three means how far it's charging. So we've, we're sort of 50% of the way probably. And then three is fully charged. Okay, the headphones that come with it are pretty cheap and nasty. Um, I guess that just allows you to use it straight out of the box and anyone who is going to be buying something like this will probably have a pair of headphones in mind that they would want to be using. But because these come with them we're going to check out these to see how well they work and we'll move to those later and you can see the unboxing of those there. So these are just your standard little earbuds they have oh, uh, a connector in here just to uh, well split the the wire and a, a woggle <laughs> I like to call them uh, to adjust them to make them a wee bit tighter it's just uh, typical plastic flex and then down at the very end we have a, a Sennheiser three pole no two pole 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so what we do is we plug that into here like so 
and for this purpose we are going to use this analog connector we can't use the optical because we are merely going to plug this into the top of my phone and play back some music on the phone to the headphones and see how well it works actually we're going to do some video as well so plug that in there so we have the tech alex podcast we'll just check that it's working with that first because other than audio quality which will probably be poor on these headphones there's, there's nothing really too exciting about listening to audio on it it's video that really counts okay so very simply what happens is the audio quality of these headphones that are included are actually, is actually really good despite the fact they're those horrible ones that don't go in your ear that it sounds very very good so I can't wait to see what it sounds like on something higher and better quality we can put up the volume quite a bit to be honest uh, and this stops and starts it if I clicking this seems to change the color of this see it's white at the moment if I click it, it turns to blue it fades out for a second and then comes back into the same volume that it was at before if I hold this in for two seconds this light goes out and the whole thing stops however the podcast is still playing so it just it mutes it essentially and if I hold this in for two seconds we it comes back on I'm not sure if that was me pressing that or that Okay, so holding that in for two seconds mutes it and then pressing that brings it back in and uh, comes back in quite quickly. Then we can throw it over to one headphone. So that's the stereo channel coming out through one particular headphone. If you want to keep only one headphone in at the same time and are worried about getting about not getting what's coming through on the left channel, you can throw it over to the right channel and then hit the two of them to reset. Okay, so now for the big test. We're going to have a go and see how it looks on a movie. See how our lip sync actually works. See if, uh, it, if there's any delay or latency here and there. Because obviously this doesn't control anything on the source. You can't pause or anything because it's only audio. So this is going to have its work cut out for it to keep up with what's being displayed on here. I'm going into Netflix, don't want to do any product placement here, but I'm currently watching House of Cards. Turn the volume up. And our lip sync is deliciously in sync. Now every time I tend to watch House of Cards, I, I can't help but talk a bit like Frank Underwood for the duration of the video, because Kevin Spacey's performance is quite amazing, aside from all the product placement in the actual uh, the show it works very well and what remains to be tested now is going and plugging this into the television and sitting down of an evening and trying to watch an entire movie with your cans on and I am going to eat my hat and say whilst uh, some people don't like these headphones I, I don't like them at all because I find them very sore to push in, you know, they are the that, that type of old-fashioned in-ear headphone. I prefer noise cancelling that pop right in or something over the top. They are non-adjustable, hard, sore and, well, quite painful. If anyone's quite happy to tolerate these or you prefer these, these are excellent. <laughs> they really are very, very good. Uh, I expected these to be two-pound headphones that they've just thrown in, but they're not. They're the audio coming out of them is very strong and very balanced uh, top marks to Sennheiser for throwing in something so awkward yet so good I, I don't actually want to throw these out because they are really good quality headphones so that is what we need to do now is go and hook this up to the television and that's what the main review of this is going to feature because well, um, I can't really do too much more here, and the benefit 
can't really be relayed through to you guys uh, save for me saying that this is excellent it, it really is it's large and cumbersome and a bit kind of weird looking but uh, I'm, I'm really impressed with it so far and I look forward to using it and hopefully it means that I'll be able to watch a lot more television <laughs> and uh, and video and things online uh, without disturbing the rest of the household. Uh, it's maybe the perfect one for the bedroom so that uh, you're not disturbing your wife or significant other, sorry, um, whilst they're trying to get some sleep and you want to watch a bit of television and you don't want to rely on, well I guess this is a form of wireless headphone which isn't the easiest thing to set up with your television. This does it all for you. And for $179.99, sorry I managed to forget the price there, it's quite a bit to bite off, but anyone who's serious about watching television and getting the best audio, audio quality on their headphones, uh, this really is something to look at. I'm, I'm genuinely impressed by it. It's, it's large, but it's actually kind of in keeping with televisions because your remote control is probably this sort of shape. So if you have this sitting on your TV stand alongside a couple of TV remotes and maybe a sky remote or something, it's not going to look out of place. And it's very easy just to grab this and walk away. Now it does make me wonder just how easy it is to set this up for flipping across to push the sound out of your television or surround sound system to this device. But that'll be looked into in the review. And uh, if it's as easy as everything else appears to be here. Anyway, hit the subscribe button if you have any questions. Throw them into the comments down below and I will certainly address them in the review. Which will be up on techaddicts.uk in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching and take care.